there are lessons from this horrible experience of COVID in the sense that governments can act in the public interest when the political will is there. And they've done things that we could never imagine, like writing off 13 billion yeah. of NHS debt or, or paying the salaries of, of loads of people in the country or renationalizing rail or whatever. And I guess I would just want us to give ourselves some kind of um, hope from that, that sometimes things can happen very fast. You know, you, yeah. things that you, you imagine incremental change is never gonna get us there fast enough, but sometimes there can be a tipping point and sometimes the magic money tree is found at the bottom of the garden and so forth. So that's just as a way of, of context. And, and what I want people to do, I guess, is what people have already said. I want people to lobby their MPs. And if their MPs are people who are saying, I can't act because I'm on the front bench or whatever, then challenge that. Um, if you still can't get through to your local MP, then try and organize as, as um, I think Kumi was saying, you know, some kind of local meeting in your in your constituency and, and get the MP there if you can. And, and I'm sure that, you know, throughout through the campaign, we would be happy to, to offer speakers as well, if that's useful, let's build this grassroots bottom-up campaign that Kumi spoke so eloquently about, because that is where, in a sense, pressure gets brought. If we're trying to get something through parliament, then there's 650 MPs, all of whom need to be persuaded. And don't ever think that your contacting an MP doesn't make a difference, yeah. although it might not do in the short term, it's part of that pressure that builds and can ultimately make a difference. If taking the knee was the most powerful mm -hmm. symbolic communication that resonated with millions of people which didn't require thick policy documents and big books and so on, what would be the climate equivalent of taking a knee? Because part of the challenge we have with climate is that those of us that have been involved in it talk as if we are talking to each other all the time, right? We don't realize how big a gap of knowledge mm -hmm. by design it's been that the majority of people won't have the level of nuance that those that have the privilege of being educated or being in movements where they're working on it. So I think for the climate bill to succeed, climate emergency bill to succeed, it must be, the approach to it needs to be popular in orientation. And I'll end with a, what might sound like a naughty idea, but if I was in the Alliance right now, what I would do is convene 100 young creative people, say some of you are going to deliver, your job is to deliver memes, creative, funny, bold memes that explodes this campaign and conversation, get some of them to develop a dance for the CE bill, get some of them to develop a song for the CE bill, because let me just tell you, we can sit here and talk till the cows come home in a language that we think everybody is talking. But let's be honest, there's not even 95% of people in the UK, who, if they watch the, or in the world, watch this conversation, would understand everything that we said. And, and politics and campaigning and mobilization is not about projecting our consciousness on the people. It's about humbling ourselves, understanding where people are, and bringing them towards us in a respectful way with dignity and integrity. Well, I think I'd like some of those young activists, or they don't even have to be young, they could be any activists anywhere, really building out this kind of idea of a strategy. What do we need at this point in time? Yeah. We need names on the bill. And, um, and, and, and that can be a very strategic activity. You know, it, I, instead of a whiteboard, I've been watching CNN all week, of course, all last week, and looking at those wonderful tools they have, you know, looking yes. at the swing states. We need the swing politicians and we need to focus on the swing politicians. We need to go down that board name by name, bringing them in. We need to ask, which does that person who signed that bill, who do they know, who do they talk to? What is their, what is their uh, circle of friends and, and collaborators? And build those names on the bill name by name. And I think that's, you know, it's a very practical, very strategic task. And, and we have this huge resource actually that has come out on the streets in the last year of young people who understand the dynamics of, of, of online and in ways in fact that, you know, um, the old, the politics of the past doesn't necessarily understand it. And that's what we should bring to this occasion. That's what Caroline needs. That's what the bill needs. And that's what will turn it into an act. I love that idea that we have a list, a parliamentary list, everything your MP has said about climate, how they voted, how many letters they've got, how they have replied to the letters, a whole sort of climate dossier and all on every single person. 
Great, Absolutely. let's do it. Can this become a piece of legacy legislation? Can we appeal to the legacy, the people who are beginning to think, what is the legacy of my life? Yeah. Whether it's my legacy at work, my legacy to my grandchildren, my legacy in the community of which I'm a part. This is a legacy of our generation that we will bequeath to the next. And so how could we appeal to those who are engaging in that legacy, that long-term thinking, and make this a piece of legacy legislation? And, it, and I'll say one more thing. It's an emergency. And we are against climate breakdown, but we always, always must remember to articulate what we're for with play, with joy, with the beauty of a living world, because knowing what you're for is so much more inspiring than only knowing what you're against. And that's what made people show up with fun and with music and with dance. So let's remember what we're for, a thriving planet and thriving people. It's so possible. And as Kumi began, this is the decade in which we determined that we're going to make it happen.